Media queries are a key when it comes to building responsive layout. It allows you to build different layout based on different screen size. But how to use it correctly? In this video, we're going to take a closer look at media queries and we're going to practice mobile first and desktop first approach. We're also going to look into orientation in media queries and lastly, we'll get to know about more complex media queries and as usual, we're going to learn by solving different tasks as well as uh, working with this website. So if you want to follow along, be sure to check out the description to download the resources. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get started. If you download and open the resource, you could find two files, index.html and style.css. In the index.html, you could find the content that we will be working with. And in the style.css, you could find in total four tasks that we need to do. And you also notice here that I'm using live server so that whenever we change something, the page could be reloaded. You can pause the video to look into the project, but if you're ready, let's get started. In the first task, we need to use the mobile first approach, which means that we're going to start from a narrow screen to wider screen. As you can see here, by default, we have one column for the photos and no matter the screen size. In the task number one, first we need to have uh, two columns when the screen is wider than 640 pixel. So if we scroll down uh, over here and let's add a media query, we're going to use a mean width. So if the screen is uh, wider than 640 pixel, we're going to uh, select the collection grid. As you can see here, uh, by default, we have only one column. And if you haven't used grid before, you can check out the description. There is a separate video about grid. But for now, let's just copy this and paste it here. Uh, so we're going to have two columns if the screen is wider than 640 pixel. And let's check it out. So if the screen is wider than 640 pixel, we have two columns. All right, so let's move on to the next step. We're going to have three columns and 60 pixel gap when the screen is wider than 768 pixel. So let's go down and let's copy this. So if the screen is wider than 700 and um, 68 pixel, we're going to have three columns and the gap is going to be 60 pixel. So if the screen is wider than 700 and uh, 68 pixel, now we have three columns. And uh, that's for the second step in the task number one. For the third step in the task one, we would have uh, four columns and 80 pixel gap when the screen is wider than 1020 pixel. So doing the same thing, which I need to uh, copy this and change this to be 1024 pixel. And we're going to have four column and 80 pixel gap. So let's save that now. Now, if the screen is wider than 1024 pixel, we're going to have four columns. All right. So we are almost done with the task number one. The last thing that we need to do in task number one is to change the heading font size to be 40 pixel and the paragraph font size to be 18 pixel when the screen is greater than 768. Uh, so let's go down. In this media query, let's select the H1 and give it font size equal to uh, 40 pixel and the paragraph to have font size equal to uh, uh, 18 pixel. And let's save that. Now, if the screen is wider than 768 pixel, you can see that uh, the font size are going to get bigger. And we don't need to add anything to the last media query. And these going to be applied if the screen is wider than 768 pixel. All right, so that's it for the task number one. And let's move on to the task number two. In the task number two, we will practice using the desktop first approach. 
and the first thing that we need to do is to delete what we have done in the task number one so let's go down and delete all the media queries that we added and what we have to do is using the desktop first approach uh, in order to produce the same result as in the task number one different from the mobile first approach with the desktop first approach we're going to uh, start from a wider screen to the narrower screen so we're going to start from the screen that is wider than 1024 pixel so by default we want to have a four column and 80 pixel gap so in the um, uh, collection grid let's change it to before uh, column and then 80 pixel gap all right so now we have four column and we also want the heading to be 40 pixel by default and the paragraph to have uh, 18 pixel by default all right so now if the screen is wider than 1024 pixel it works great but it does not work on a narrow screen yet so let's try to fix this first let's add new uh, media query instead of using uh, min width in the mobile first approach we're going to use max width if the screen is narrower than 1024 pixel we're going to select the collection grid and we're going to give it a three column and then the gap equal to 60 pixel so now if the screen is uh, smaller than 1024 pixel we're going to have three columns all right so let's move on to the next breakpoint uh, if i remember correctly it's going to be uh, 768 pixel if the screen is uh, narrower than 768 pixel we're going to have two column and 40 pixel and we also need to set the heading font size to be 20 pixel and the paragraph font size to be 16 pixel all right so now if the screen width is uh, smaller than 768 pixel we're going to have uh, two columns and smaller font size all right so let's move on to the last breakpoint which is a uh, 640 pixel and we're going to copy this it's going to be one column and we don't need this anymore as we already have it here so let's save that now if the screen is uh, narrower than 640 pixel we're going to have one column all right so we just use the desktop first approach to make our website responsive by using the max width in the media query and that's it for the task number two let's move on to the task number three for the task number three we need to show the navigation on top of the page instead of on the left when the user is on the portrait view so we need to move this navigation over here so we can use the orientation in media query if we go here and add a new media query and let's say orientation if the orientation equal to portrait we're going to uh, let's say select first the uh, body element if we go up over here you can see that in the body we have two columns the first one is equal to uh, 50 pixel which is the navigation and the second one equal to one function which is the main content so now if we copy this and uh, paste it here instead of column we're going to use row and uh, we also need to uh, give the grid template column to be learned all right so now if we save that you can see now uh, this navigation is moved over here 
In order to make it work, we also need to uh, select the navigation. Uh, in the navigation, we use the column flex direction. So if we scroll here and instead of column, let's use row and let's save that. All right, so now we can see the icon in one row and let's use justify content space evenly to add even space between uh, different icon and in the navigation we also have the border right so let's copy this and in here instead of border right we're going to have border bottom all right so now i think it looked good on the portrait let's make the screen bigger to see if it works on the uh, landscape mode as well it works super fine and that's it for the task number three let's move on to the task number four and get to know about more complex media queries in the task number four first we need to have the top navigation only if the screen is narrower than 640 pixel so if we scroll down over here we already have the uh, top navigation if the orientation equal to portrait so we also need to add if the screen is uh, smaller so max width equal to 640 pixel then we're going to have the uh, top navigation otherwise we're not going to have then make the screen a bit smaller so now the screen is wider than 640 pixel, but the navigation is on the side, even though this is a portrait mode. All right, so we just solved the first step in the task number four. In the task number four, we also need to change the font size of the icon to be 24 pixel and make the navigation width to be 64 pixel. If the screen is wider than 768 pixel or it is on the landscape view so in order to do that we need to add a new media query so let's say here media first if the screen is uh, let's say uh, wider than uh, 768 pixel so let's use mean width here 768 pixel and in order to have the all logic in media query we need to use the comma so if the screen is uh, wider than 768 pixel or the orientation uh, equal to landscape and we're going to select the body and we're going to give the grid template column uh, 64 pixel for the width of the navigation and then one fraction and we also need to select the icon so let's go down over here and copy this and we need to give it a font size equal to 24 pixel so now if we save that if the screen is on landscape mode the font size of the icon is going to be bigger as well as add the width of the navigation or the screen is wider than 768 pixel so like this uh, we also have the bigger icon and wider navigation so that's all the task number four let's summarize what we have learned first we got to know more about the mobile first approach that we start from the smaller screen size to the biggest screen size and we can use the mean width in the media query for each breakpoint and different from mobile first approach with a desktop first approach we start from the biggest screen size to the smaller screen size and we use max width in media query for each breakpoint the third topic that we covered is orientation in the example we use orientation in media query to change side navigation to be top navigation on the portrait mode and we also try out more complex media queries like we can use end and or logic in media queries by using the end or comma syntax and one more thing sometimes you also see the media type like all, print, screen or speak 
This is optional. It tells what kind of media the code is for. So for example, if the media type is equal to print, the CSS is only applied if the page is printed. All right, so that's it for the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to help me out, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out devchallenges.io for more tutorials. Otherwise, happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.